Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is one of one, but you can call me seven and it's Octopath Traveler 2 time. Today, we tackle Agnea's chapter three and we're also going to do Hikari and Agnea's crossed path. I think that's what it's called. Uh, and then we'll see at the end how we feel if we feel like we can tackle another chapter. We'll have to see. Uh, Cause I think we've done at least parts of everybody's chapter two now. So let's get going. Oh, but first we have some travel banter to view for I think both Casti and Throne. Let's see. Blech. This hunt is the worst. Why would you use people as bait to lure in other people? I'd use something tastier. Oh, chat. Sometimes humans say they'll do one thing, then do another, right? Yes. People lie for all sorts of reasons. Yeah, but if everyone says things they don't mean, how do you know if what you're hearing is true or not? It must be so tiring thinking about it all the time. Hmm. You make a good point. Still, sometimes the truth only causes pain. That's why we tell small fibs. To slowly feel each other out and learn how to interact without causing mutual pain. Strange as it may sound, in a sense, deceit is the basis of human relationships. H humans are complicated. <laughs> sometimes falsehoods can be a kindness, Ochet. Oh gosh. A very, uh, a, a deep one to open the day, open the episode. Casty. Have you remembered anything new lately? Nothing of any importance, sadly. The truth is, I'm somewhat frightened. Of what? This amnesia. I hear it can be a self-defense mechanism, something the mind does to forget horrors or trauma. Perhaps I will be happier if I never uncover the secrets of my past. Be at ease, Casty. You are a good person and a fine apothecary. Your actions now prove this without a shadow of a doubt. There's no way your past is filled with darkness and despair. Th thank you, Temenos. You're surprisingly nice today. Today? I'm always nice. <laughs> oh dear, Oswald. Your eyes are bloodshot. Hold on one moment. I'll whip up some eye drops. That won't be necessary. Oh dear. Double deer! Oh, double deer! You sound all stuffed up! I hope you haven't caught a cold. My physical condition is optimal. <laughs> Were you... crying? That girl's earnest passion seems to have stimulated my tear- What are you, a robot? How peculiar! Oswald. It's not peculiar. The answer is quite simple. It's because you have a kind heart. Oswald, I can't wait to play you. I almost forgot, but I found a leaf on the road yesterday. Ooh, you're one lucky apothecary. Maybe, but I figured the person who dropped it was in a bind, so I handed it over to the local magistrate. <laughs> that's nice of you. Hope it finds its way back to its proper owner. Your mention of luck reminded me, but when I stopped by the tavern the other day, the barkeep started whooping and shouting, said I was their thousandth customer, and gave me half off on my drinks. Tarnation! Luck herself must be watching over you. Perhaps. Lately, I have the strangest feeling that something is watching over me. Ominous. And no follow-up. <sighs> is something wrong? It's not often I hear you sigh. I was just thinking about how very dangerous your journey is. Huh. <laughs> this is my everyday, Detective. I'm beginning to understand where that indomitability of yours comes from. Did she say something? But, at the very least, the villains around you look perfectly... villainous. It's almost refreshing. Why, thank you. Around me, most villains tend to pose as saints. Of course they do. There's evil everywhere you go in this world. I suppose we think that because villains tend to gather around good people. <laughs> you mean to say that I am a good person? One disguised as a villain, yes. Hey, Throne? Why do you kill things you can't eat? Oh, I never really thought about it. I did it because it was my job. But now, I do it for freedom. Freedom? Is that tasty? I can't say. I do know that captivity isn't, though. 
Everyone is bound by something, whether it be parents, superiors, family, or their tribe. The way I see it, we're all wearing collars. Really? Do I have one? No, you don't. Aww, I wanted one too. Consider yourself lucky, Ochap. Oh, I guess fathers are the same everywhere. Always pushing their children to do the impossible. Your father too? When I was a chickadee, we got our hands on this humongous melon. Pops wanted to share it with the neighbors, so he told me to cut in eight pieces. He said if any of them was even a seed heavier, it was no good. He gave me an earful when I said it wasn't possible. Said we had to be fair, else the neighbors would be unhappy. I can imagine. People fight over treasure all the time. Made me sad thinking of people squabbling over something small like that. So I got each of them their own giant melon. Ha. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> the neighbors were gritted from ear to ear. But I used up a bundle of leaves in the process. So we were stuck eating stir-fried veggies for days. In the end, I got myself another earful from Pops. I should have seen that coming. <laughs> Partitio! Now to find that tavern. Father has set a trap for me there, without a doubt. I've known him for a long time. I can't imagine he'd pass up the opportunity. Are you ready, Oswald? You are rather quiet today, Professor. It's cold. <laughs> oh, did I find another guild? Hunter, yes! Oh, ho. I'm surprised you managed to find this place. This is the Hunter's Guild, and I am its master. Hmm? I seem too young to be a guild master. Well, appearances can be deceiving. I'm actually 120 years old. More importantly, if you found this place, that means you have promise. I hereby recognize you as one of us. I look forward to seeing what you can do as a hunter. That's really useful. Uh, so let's hear about legendary arms. Now that you are a part of our guild, you ought to know about the exorcising bow. It was passed down in Timberane's royal family for generations. Only soldiers recognized by the king were permitted to use it. I myself have only laid eyes upon it once when I was young. I surmise any adept with a bow would like to give it a shot. Somewhere on this island is an altar dedicated to the Huntress. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, we've only got one person to give the job to. And... It makes... It makes... Uh, it makes her a cat girl. I mean, like, you know. Throne's great. I'm not complaining. You know, she's like one of... You know, it's like one of my other favorite cat girls. You know, Nia. From Xenoblade Chronicles. It's fine. This is great. I'm not losing my mind. Listen, Pam. I'm sorry, but we really don't have time to play with you today. All right, guys. We made it to Trop Tropu Hopu. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, yeah, this is where... This is where Agnea's Chapter 3 is. The recommended level is 20. And then after that, we'll be heading over back to the Western Continent for our Crossed Paths uh, story with Hikari and Agnea. So let's go. I like the music here. Agnea continues her journey to Tropuhopu in search of the right words to the Song of Hope she got from Gil. Okay. Let's explore a little bit first, see what's up. Okay, guys. I've done my uh, fair share of exploring of this place. It's a really cool. It's like a, a sort of bustling metropolis on the water. They even have a, a floating theater that's all the way back there, but... I've done all my fair share of talking with everyone. I stole a bunch of items. I equipped my heroes accordingly. Uh, I did a couple of side stories, including one where um, there's a guy and he was missing pearls on a necklace and I wasn't recording. I felt really dumb for it, but I wasn't recording. He was, he was missing pearls on a necklace. So I found a bunch that people had found and I gave them to him and he used them to propose to his, his girlfriend and it was very sweet. And it was, a, I, I might put some stuff up from the screenshots that I took of of it on my Switch. On, I might put some of that on the screen now. Um, but it was really sweet. It's just, I love all the stories and the stuff that they put into this game to make it feel like a real world. Um, but I dueled a couple of people. I, there are some side stories that I've got just lined up. Um, I sold some stuff. I have a lot, of, a lot more money now. I feel better equipped. 
And really, I mean, every time I go to a new place, it's just more to explore, more to find, more of the world that is fleshed out, and I just really love it. So for now, we're gonna go to the tavern. It's time to see Agnea's story. All right, guys, chapter three, let's go. What a nice place to find yourself. Song of Hope. And I told Gil I'd find words for the song he composed, but... It's a little hard. You can't expect yourself to just get it. Inspiration hasn't struck me just yet. Maybe here. But I'm sure I'll find the words eventually. I just have to keep going until I do. Oh, that makes sense. There's a floating theater here. Of course we'd go here as Agnea. Now then, this town looks like a fine place to stop on my journey. It's got great groovy music, too. I love it. Ooh, who are those costumed people over there on the bottom right? Oh, goddess, lend me your strength. Hello? Huh? What's going on? You guys look fancy. <sighs> oh, I see. How did that happen? Well, I'll be. Not even Tansy can budget. This is all your fault for wanting to take a shortcut, Tansy. <laughs> We wouldn't be in a rush if you hadn't overslept, Rico. Oh, is it like a traveling troupe of performers? We were already pressed for time because the ship was late, and now this thing won't budge. That is fun. Hello. Say, Coda, if pushing doesn't Coda. work, why don't we pull? Let's give it a try. <laughs> Their voices. Wait. Uh-oh. <sighs> Oh, guys. Giselle's Just true. What do you think you're doing? Okay, I see. Sorry. <laughs> Improvisation. I love it. That's the true spirit of comedy. <laughs> it was pretty funny. How can you be so calm, boss? Yeah, where do you guys gotta be? Everyone will laugh at us if we perform without our wagon and props. Then I'll consider it a success. Not even gold shines brighter than a smile. Aww. Just a big hearty Come laugh. On, there's gotta be something we can do. Oh, think. Think. Yeah, what can you? I mean, we can help. Oh, goddess. Dear goddess. Hello. Pardon me, but I know a way to get your wagon moving again. How? What do you mean, Agnia? Really? I don't know a way. Are you from around here? Do I look like I'm from around here? Sorry, that's a bit rude. No, I'm just a traveler. Would you happen to have a sturdy stick lying around? Hmm. Rico, Coda, could you help this woman find what she needs? We're gonna use basic physics. Will this do? Leverage it out somehow. You can't be serious. That's Coda's flute. Well, it, don't say it'll work. It won't work. I see. Just wait right here, then. I'll go find one. A big stick. Okay. We can uh, we can do that. Can we inquire? Oh, our uh, travel banter. Travel banter first. What a strange place. I think this town is wonderful. Everyone's got a spring in their step. It's true. Yeah, guys, it is true. If I had been raised here, perhaps I would have grown into a decent adult. Filthy towns corrupt their people to the core. That's not true. I think you're more than decent, Throne. You're strong and kind. To tell the truth, I want to be more like you. A proper city lady. Thank you. I'm sure not even the filthiest city could have dulled your shine. Oh. Alright, let's see. What are these people like? Coda, 19, a young performer in Giselle's traveling troupe and a skilled flautist. She and her partner, Rico, are always in perfect harmony. Their comedic dialogue set to music is one of the group's most popular performances. That was very helpful. Uh, you can't use my flute. We need it for our show. Yeah, yeah, we can't break that. I wasn't planning on it. A young performer in Giselle's traveling troupe, her professive, her perf her impressive acting, storytelling, and sleights of hand make her an indispensable member of the group. She grew up with Coda, so the two are not only partners upon the stage, but best friends as well. What do we do? What do we do? Sorry, we dragged you into this. 
the director of Giselle's traveling troupe, known for her physical strength. She provides support for the group and is in charge of keeping the eccentric performers in line. Her lover passed away, and now she prays to a mysterious goddess whenever something happens. 26 years old. Wait, how old is, um... How old is Rico? 20, okay. So Coda... <laughs> to live is to improvise. So Coda's the youngest, okay. Oh. I can't... Hmm. I can't inquire. None of the path actions pop up for... Uh... For Giselle. Interesting. Hello, sir. Would you happen to have a big stick? Do I have a sturdy stick? Well, I do have a wooden sword here. Oh, oh. I have to. I always forget when they're just like, yeah, here we go. Uh, that looks unlikely to break easily. Uh, okay. I have to get back and help those folks. Let's go. Hello, Giselle. Sorry, kid. Would you, but would you mind helping us out? If you could find a strong stick of so yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Let's get her out. Now, if we just put this stick right here, and... Push, push. Up you go! Yay! We did it! Oh my goddess! Oh my goddess! Is Agnia older than these people? I don't think I think she's older than who these two are, in kid, front of her. But we owe you one. Want to perform with me? <laughs> <laughs> don't mention it. I learned a lot playing in the mud. Oh. Up. <laughs> You're stronger than you look. What's your name? Yeah, I stabbed a bunch of people. Agnia, Agnia Bristarni. I don't know if I remember hearing her last name before. Bristarni. Bristarni. You know. Well, in any case, we owe you a debt of gratitude, Agnia. Do you know my mom? We're a roaming band of entertainers. We call ourselves Giselle's Traveling Troop. Hi. Oh, oh. Whoa, that dove appeared out of thin air. Wow. Where did it come from? I like her clapping. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I like her clapping. It's so cute. In my eyes... Not even the shine of gold compares to that of a smile. I wonder if it's a Dimitri from Fire Emblem type beat where her smile doesn't necessarily reach her eyes. That's why the girls and I travel the world, hoping to make it shine. Mm, it's a little more happy-go-lucky than I... I think. Bringing smiles to every corner of the realm. That's our motto. Mm. Wow! Confetti! Oh, wonderful! <laughs> I'm so easily entertained. I'm a dancer. I'm on a journey to become a star. Yeah. That's fantastic. Right, Rico? Coda? Be nice, kids. You're a woman with dreams, Agnia. A star is someone who illuminates people's lives. That's the goal. That is what stars do. She makes them smile in the best and worst of times. She's there, come rain or shine. How very idealistic. It's a feat that only those who keep getting up on stage can achieve. Why, why do I feel like we're gonna fight yes, you, Giselle? Why do I feel like we're gonna fight you? Boss, it's almost time for rehearsal. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm wary. I hope we meet again someday, my dear dreamer. We'll be putting on a show later. If you have time, why don't you come see it? Okay, yeah, why not? I promise it'll make you smile. What if we fight all of them, guys? What happens if that? What happens if we have to fight the entire group? I can't even imagine what sort of show brings smiles to every corner of the realm. Yeah, we should we should go watch it. I could learn a thing or two from them. Mm-hmm. I better hurry. Wouldn't want to miss it. How fares your father back home, Agnia? He's doing just fine, thanks. I see. That's good to hear. Papa's a tailor. And my sister Paula's taken to helping him out at the shop these days. I'm sure your father misses you dearly. Yeah, this is the first time I've been away from him, but... When I become a star, I'm going to wear the dresses he makes. I have a feeling that'll bring a smile to Papa's face. I have no doubt that it will, Agnia. <laughs> Thanks, Hikari. Just wholesome conversations. We take those. Is it showtime or not quite? Or does Giselle need saving? <sighs> Where is she? You guys literally <sighs> just got away from me. What's the problem now? 
That she disappeared, maybe? What do we do now? <sighs> this is my fault. I should have been keeping an eye out. Oh, yeah, I, I guess, guess you're the oldest. Start looking. What happened, guys? Oh, Agnea. Is something wrong? What happened to your show? Yeah, she wants to go watch. We have a runaway. Oh. A runaway? You mean, your dove? Don't worry, I'll help you find it. No, it's... No, it's not the dove. It's boss. Yeah. But, what? Whoa, look at that, <laughs> look at that shock uh, what reaction. What do you mean? Sometimes her nerves get to her before a show. I could tell it was a bit of a facade. But we have to bring her back. We can't perform without our leading lady. Hmm. <sighs> oh, goddess. Or did she get kidnapped, maybe? Hmm. Hmm. Curious. Let me help. I don't quite understand why she's run away, but... We have to find her. For the audience's sake. Yeah, you guys are scheduled to perform here. Thank you, Agnea. Let's do it. Thank you! Yeah, Oh, Guys, we got it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Did she make it all the way over here? Oh, she did. Giselle. What's going on? Hey. Giselle. There you are. Well, if it isn't the dreamer. Your voice sounds more real Your now. Your troop said you ran away. Did something happen? Talk to me. What's going on? It all disappeared. Every line I was supposed to say just vanished. What do you... My mind went completely blank during rehearsal. Imagine oh. if that happened in a real performance. Oh, dude, hey, this is how it works. Come on. It's happened before. And every time, I just ran away. Well, that's not healthy. I'm not meant for the stage anymore. My life as a performer is over. Come on. Giselle. That's what rehearsal is for. But what about your audience? They've been looking forward to your show. I envy the sea. It has no worries. It feels no pain. It must be nice not being swayed by anyone. Oh. Sometimes I wish I could just sink to the bottom of the ocean. Oh, Giselle. Oh, dear. And rest there peacefully, like a seashell. <sighs> Dude. Gosh. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, now we can inquire. The leader of a group of traveling performers, she plays the lead role in their productions and is known for her theatrical and amusing mannerisms upon the stage. She and her friends travel the realm with their wagon of stage equipment in tow. And yes, there's a 100% chance to allure her. Giselle, you said you wanted to be a seashell. Right? Mm. Mm. But you can't. You can't just go giving up like that. Oh, here here comes it. Give in up? <laughs> Her accent is coming through. Life ain't always easy. Everybody knows that. Oh, yeah, it's just... <laughs> but making people smile? How charming. That's why you and I live and breathe. <sighs> Agnea. Oh! Mm. What happened to your feet? Mm? They've got calluses all over. Don't tell me. You got all those from dancing? Yeah, man. I can't imagine how much that hurt. And at your tender age... How old are we? I don't even remember. These are nothing. They were worth it to bring smiles to people's faces. <sighs> Come on, Giselle. Go back to your troop. So chin up, Giselle. Even if you forget your lines, you just learn them again. That's what rehearsal is for. Rehearsal is for screwing up. Come on. Believe in yourself. You can do anything you set your mind to. Oh, come on, get out there. A star is someone who illuminates people's lives, right? <laughs> so even if you stumble, you just have to get back on your feet. Hmm. Just get back on your feet, huh? How very sweet. Yay. It's high time you came out of your shell, Giselle. Hey, that rhymes! The 
Besides, you're not a seashell. You're a shiny pearl. And I think the world could use your radiance. Agnia. Come on. You're right. I have to get back on my feet. Let's get back to the stage. That's the spirit. Now let's go. Agnia, could I see your legs for a moment? Uh, of course. I thought this might be the case. You've been putting far too much strain on them. You need to take proper care of your legs. They carry you everywhere, after all. You're right. Let me apply some balm to help them heal. Thank you, Casty. I'll always be in tip-top shape for dancing with you around. Alrighty, where's the rest of your crew? Here they are. Hello. We brought her back. Oh! They're here. Hi. While journeying across the land with our trusty wagon, we arrived here. On Tropu Hopu. I'm, I'm glad I pronounced it right. <laughs> We've come to shine upon the flowers in your hearts, that they may bloom into smiles. We are Giselle's traveling troop, bringing smiles to every corner of the realm. We've got a packed house. This is a really cool theater. A really neat theater. I can't thank you enough, Agnia. Well, when are you supposed to go on as well? You helped us get our wagon out of the mud and even help Boss find her courage again. Oh, you direct, right. <sighs> I'm sorry. I got worked up, so... Yeah, I mean, it's fair. I might have gotten a little carried <laughs> away. You don't need to apologize. We're grateful to you. Now, I wonder when we'll have to fight. <laughs> She puts on quite the show, doesn't she? Yeah. She sure does. Boss's bad habit of running away had our troop constantly on the move. I see. But when she stands upon that stage, she shines brighter than anyone. What sort of spell did you cast on her, Agnia? <laughs> That's a good question. I've never seen her this radiant before. Praise be the goddess for this day. I wonder who this goddess is that you keep praising. <laughs> Yay! Look at all those people. Thank you. Thank you. It warms my heart to see you all smile like this. Aww, yeah. Now then, there's someone I'd like to introduce to you all. It me. Introduce me. I owe a great deal to her for setting me on the right path. Please welcome Agnia, the traveling dancer. Time to dance. Whee! Me? That's your cue. Get up there. I just, when am I supposed to fight? That is the question, isn't it? Show us a dance, will you? I mean, of course I will, but... <laughs> yeah, she'd if love you to. Insist. But I am... Um, Watch me shine! I... Mm, I'm curious and suspicious. And I would like to know when the danger comes. Yeah, cheers everyone! Cheers! Do a good show! I want to thank everyone for our successful show tonight. And Agnia for touching my heart. Now this is a nice departure Your heart? from Throne A and uh, Casties. <laughs> I can say without a doubt that you'll bring happiness to people the world over. D do you really think so? Hell yes. I agree. You're going to be a star someday. Yeah. Speaking of stars. That's the goal. That reminds me of Dolcinea. Dolcinea. <laughs> I think Agnia here can outshine even that superstar. Mm, I hope. You've got a real talent for making people smile. It's that earnest, it's that earnest I, uh, and eagerness. I don't know what to say. But we won't go down without a fight. We're going to keep practicing. Yeah, technically we compete, don't we? We're co competitors in this business. We have to, for the Grand Gala. The Grand Gala? 
Isn't that normally pronounced gala? Hmm. It's the greatest festival on the Eastern continent. Entertainers and cool. dancers from all across the realm gather there. Okay, a goal. Standing upon that stage is the greatest honor there is for performers like us. Yeah. It's like Broadway. Wow. That sounds like a dream come true. You gotta figure out how to get there. Well, my mind's made up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to that gala. Perfect. You too, Agnia? I just have a feeling that I need to be there if I'm going to be a star. I mean, yes, that makes sense. Which is why I have to go. Woohoo! <laughs> I like these two goobers. <laughs> I remember now why your name sounds so familiar. You've got the same last name as Kwani Bristarni, the star from the West. Correct, but... You knew my mother? I see. So you're her daughter. I heard about her when I went to the town of Sai in the West for a show. Mm. They said she danced there about 20 years ago. She was well-loved by everyone. Just like you. I had no idea. I think I'd like to see this town for myself. I might be able to learn something about my mother there. Yeah. It's probably a good idea. There's still time before the gala this year. It might not be a bad idea to pay that place a visit. I believe I will. Thank you, Giselle. Hmm. Agnia. You gave me more courage than I've ever had before. It was very sweet. But I haven't been able to give anything to you in return. That's okay. Giselle... You gave us information. That's not true. You've all given me so much. Uh, a goal worth fighting for, the beauty of friendship. The value of a smile, really. That's her, like, her whole so, thing. Then I'm happy. Good luck on your journey, Agnia. No matter what happens, keep smiling. If you do, happiness is sure to find you. Yeah. Those are beautiful words. Would you mind if I use them in a song? <laughs> It'd be my honor. Thank you, Giselle. All right, is it time Mom, to go? We're ready to go. Yeah. All right, kiddos. I'll see you all around. Looks like this is goodbye for now, Agnia. We'll see you again, I'm sure of it. May the goddess be with you. See you! Bye. Safe travels, everyone. I'll see you at the Grand Gala. Yes. I look forward to it already. Just please don't run away this time, boss. Got him. Destroyed. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. And even if I stumble, I just have to get back on my feet. Yeah. Right, Agnia? <laughs> right. Okay. Man, was that the whole chapter? There's no fight? It's an entirely story-based one? Agnia has set her sights on a new goal. Performing at the Grand Gala. She believes dancing upon the stage there will lead her to stardom. Her fateful meeting with Giselle's traveling troop provides her with a verse to the Song of Hope. But before the gala, she decides to visit a town her mother once danced in. Wow! That is really interesting! It's just it's just a, a, a story, a full-on story chapter, no fighting or anything like that. Huh. I wonder if there are any like that in Octopath 1, but regardless, we finished it! <laughs> oh! Hey, Aggie! I just thought of a great- a great phrase! A great phrase? I wanted to say catchphrase. Oh, really? Do tell! Every day I'm dying for something tasty to eat. Then what should appear but me, me, me. Yo, she's spitting. It, is that for one of Giselle's plays? <laughs> nope! It's for the Song of Hope! Perfect fit, right? He yeah, I can feel your spirit in the words, oh chat. My tummy's empty. Too much thinking makes me hungry. <laughs> Say, why don't you have some jerky? 
I got some from the townsfolk earlier. Thanks, you really do bring smiles to people's faces. <laughs> oh, Chet, you're a little unhinged. It's great. Great news! I've settled on the theme for our next performance, Battle. I'm thinking on-stage conflict's so real and riveting it leaves the audience absolutely speechless. So I need actors who really know how to brawl. None of this polite stage fighting nonsense. Well, I bet if I... Oh, this guy's really strong. I wonder if Hikari can actually handle Raise this at this your level. Weapon. Oh dear. On your guard. Okay. Now it begins. Now my blood boils. He ain't got good. Ooh. For the prize. That was a coup. tough fight. Yeah, that got me a lot of XP. Ugh. Oh. Sheesh. My word. You wield that sword like a bad review on opening night. You're just the man I'm looking for. Yes, I have my show now. I see it all from opening curtain to standing ovation. You will agree to perform in it, won't you? You play a master bodyguard, the ultimate rival blocking the hero on his journey. Uh, it a lone paladin wages a bitter war against a secretive cabal devoted to evil. Suddenly, Hikari the bodyguard steps into his path. Paladin of the flame. Unrivaled master of the secret technique. <laughs> your tail ends here, Paladin. Say your prayers. More than usual. We have no interest in unnecessary bloodshed. Throw down your weapon. No! I think I'll use it to slice their wicked designs in two instead, with my secret technique. Is it... it well, if you insist on fighting... You've drawn steel! <gasps> They're all down. Hey, we're the villains here! You're not supposed to thrash the hero in the climactic battle! My apologies. It seems that my instincts kick in the same way even when facing an imitation sword. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah! They loved it. They loved it. What stupendous swordplay. That bodyguard is amazing. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's how it was supposed to work, but the hero lost. It's all over. I worked so hard on that scripted for nothing. Nothing, that is, except for thunderous applause from the audience. Hooray! All's well that ends well. Ooh, I should write that down. You made this play the freest performance it could have been, and I thank you for it. God. Okay. Okay, and now we're back on the western continent. Um, we're back in Hinoeuma. Uh, I think in... What's the name of this village? We're back in Ryu. Yeah, I was right. Um, and uh, we're going to go see our first crossed path. I'm very intrigued by this. Um, the Dancer and Warrior Part 1. During a quiet night in Ryu, Agnia and Hikari hear the sounds of a beautiful instrument drifting on the wind. Recommended level is 8, but we're here for fun, so let's see it. It's one of those, um, it's like, it, it's not a pick, it's like a whole thing you hold in your hand. I forget what it's called, it's an Asian instrument. What a pleasant sound. I could listen to it all day. Hmm. That's a lute, an instrument well-loved in Kuh. Okay, well, I feel like an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I've seen it, I saw it in like, maybe it was just a lute, but I've seen it in other media. I don't know. What's going on? Ah, okay, I see. That song was beautiful. It's been too long since I've heard the melodies of a lute in the air. Far and wide, people speak of me in awe. Today, tomorrow, and the day after that. Okay, Yomi. They call me 
Yomi of a thousand tongues. That is a dope name. That's actually pretty metal. Wow, what a name. You're telling me, Agnia. I've traveled to every corner of this world, taking in my fill of its music along the way. Hmm. I have a song for every occasion, every place, every person. That's quite the boast. <sighs> You've piqued my interest. Let's have one then. Hmm. Gladly. Provided you have the coin, my thousand tones were mastered at great effort, after all. Hmm. How much? Y you have money. <laughs> Is he suspicious? Are we bribing them? Is that the path action we're taking? Yeah. How much money is it? 800 leaves? Okay. Will this do? A lutist known well to those in the desert as Yomi of a Thousand Tones. She knows a great number of songs and has been widely praised for delivering tailored performances that move her listeners' hearts. Okay. Is this enough, Lady Yomi? He sounds so... Uh, Irritated. Of course. This shall buy you a song. Interesting. One that will fit you as well as your finest kimono. However. Mm hmm. Hmm. I require time to make ready. Return to me tomorrow eve, and you shall have what you paid for. Huh. Ah. Behind every great show is hours of preparation. My question is, right, like... Hey, it's just 800 leaves, so I wouldn't care. Just so. Now Based off of how much I have right hearts, now. For tomorrow, they shall be moved as they never have been before. But I think maybe Hikari knows better. Hmm. Wait until the following night. Does it just mean... Do I just switch it? Oh, did you take your hat off? Welcome, welcome. My audience of two has arrived. Wow, you didn't run off with my leaves. Now, listen well and be carried away by my thousand tones. Hmm? Something seems different about her, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, it appears she's already spent our payment on those fine clothes. I see, okay. Alas, I must apologize, for I cannot carry you away just yet. We need, she needs more money. I've come into a spot of trouble, you see. You have? Look here, the string of my loot has frayed. Without replacements, I fear... Yomi... That our song will have to wait. I want. Indeed. I want a good song. It is tantamount to asking a soldier to charge into battle with a broken sword. Ikari could. Oh, we wouldn't want that happening. If I recall, lute strings are made from the hair of a horse's tail, yes? Mm hmm. Indeed. There is but one man nearby with the means to help. But he is not one to offer his aid lightly. Are we going to entreat him now? You'll have no truck with a wanderer such as I. He scarcely acknowledges my existence. Uh... Reminds me of Papa. Ouch! Then maybe you can help him see reason. Can I count on you? You don't need to ask. I'll see what I can do. Hmm. All right. Is it this dude? Yeah, it's this guy. Right, he's got a horse, obviously. Thank you very much. All right, you can have it. Here's your, here's your, the horse hair t thing. Will this work, Yomi? Now fix it. Oh, I believe it will. This is finer than I could have imagined. Oh God. I see you too can move the hearts of others. Well, that's her goal, so. <laughs> you might be right about that. <laughs> With this, I can craft a string worthy of my skill. Now it's time to wait another night for her to replace it, right? However, I fear the moment is not ripe for such a performance. 
Pray come again tomorrow, and I promise that my melody shall lift you to the heavens. Somehow I'm not surprised. The wait will make the music sound all the sweeter. Be patient, Hikari. W w will it? <sighs> if you insist. You're generous with the benefit of the doubt, I see. Okay. Will she still be here by the time we make for a hill where the moon is visible? There! There she is! Oh, welcome, my honored patrons. Hmm. We were looking for you. Do you ever stay in the same spot? Hikata's getting irritated. My sincerest apologies for the trouble. However, I had no choice but to go where I could best drink in the beauty of tonight's moon. Are we ever going to get to hear a song? Oh, now that's cool. This is a great shot. Wow. You're right. It's enchanting. It Romance? In my Octopath Traveler 2? It is enchanting. I wanted its dulcet rays to alight upon my lute as I played your song. For the two of you, huh? Tonight, I perform upon a stage like no other, with string and garb equal to the occasion. I hope it's true. All thanks to you, my most honored audience of two. That rhymes. I hope this is worth the trouble. <laughs> Ikari. It will be, I assure you. Now, She's gonna play. Listen. Okay. This is a little romantic. Look at the two of them. I bet it would be nice with the wind, with the wind and breeze blowing and everything. Seeing the desert sands and feeling yeah. It's plaintive and a little mournful. At least that's what the sound is like to me. That's what I think, anyway. Well, I hope they liked their song. I thought it was pretty neat. I've never... I've never heard such a song before. I was moved, but somehow... I feel so... so sad. Yeah... Ikari, are you okay? By the light of the heart. A favorite of mine. The clothes, the strings, the moon... They must be just so Maybe she's just an artiste, not an artist, an artiste. Maybe that's why. It's the only way to perform this song correctly. Did it work, Hikari? Nyomi, why did you choose this song to play for us? I've heard it before. I had a friend who would often play the lute for me. She always struck warm tones to match the warmth in her heart. Her name was... Suki. Oh, right. Uh, was? But you played the song much differently than she did. You painted it with melancholy. Well then, our business is concluded. I shall take my leave. You painted it with melancholy. Ikari, what does this mean? S 
so ends The Dancer and the Warrior Part 1. I want to explore more what that meant. Seriously. It's a nice little story hook. All right, guys, I would do a chapter two, maybe like Throne's or something like that, but I'm running a little short on time today, so I'm just gonna uh, end this episode here, and I promise that we'll pick back up uh, with all speed in the next episode. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I definitely did, and I will see you guys in the next video. So for now, have a good rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Bye! Thank you.